Let me say bonjour, comment allez-vous? I've never been called the pièce de la résistance. Uh, <laughs> what a, uh, I think that's a great honor. I don't know, but uh, I, I really uh, am honored to be on this platform with all the leaders of the energy business and, uh, and Sheila and Barry. Uh, really uh, continue to appreciate uh, USCA's leadership uh, as we discuss these important issues. And I, I, uh, I think that uh, the previous speakers uh, represented uh, gas and coal and nuclear and renewables. Um, I remember being at a dinner one time and uh, there were a number of speakers like this that we got to be about 10.30 and the last speaker came up and said, uh, you know, I think everything that could have been said, it should have been said, has been said. And so everybody breathed a sigh of relief that we could go home and relax and get to bed. Uh, and then he said, but not by everybody. And then he talked uh, about another hour after that. So <laughs> it, uh, uh, I will try not to do that and interrupt your lunch. Uh, but I did notice that, uh, that the gender is changing here. Sheila, I think that's a wonderful thing. But the fact that uh, you placed me between uh, Julia and Maria and Karen, uh, you know, that's just not fair. Uh, but it, it is an exciting time to be in the energy business. And to those of you in the media uh, here, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I know it's a very slow news period not right here in 2020, in the beginning of 2020, but, uh, uh, you know, energy and environmental issues are kind of interesting too, and they're a large part of the national debate. So, um, you know, I think that uh, usually in the past when we've come uh, to these forums, people have a tendency to talk about uh, the last year and what's happened there and what the outlook is for the next year. I've noticed that people are really talking longer term right now, and I'd like to do that as well, because uh, basically I think a longer term perspective does give you a bigger picture of what's really happening in this um, business, and I think since we are at the start of a new decade, it really is appropriate to go back and take a look at that. Uh, you know, the, the uh, energy, uh, the electricity business, uh, which, uh, let me get, uh, I have to get a slide up here. I don't have a whole lot of these things, but I think it's uh, interesting to put this into perspective. What do I do, just turn it off? Oh, okay, there we go. Um, in any case, you know, the electricity business does represent uh, a fairly substantial part of the economy. Uh, it's 5% it's, it's, uh, of GDP. Uh, if, uh, you know, I always say it's the first 5% of GDP because without electricity, you really haven't got much of a GDP. Uh, and 7 million jobs. So it, it, it's a very, very substantial business. And it's had a long-term mission. The mission, uh, you know, for decades has been reliable, affordable, and clean, increasingly clean. And, and that mission is something that doesn't change. But during the last decade, we've really gotten the industry together. And I think uh, Julia talked about some of the heroes in the business that have been the leaders. But it's real, I, I, you know, I don't have any favorite children. Uh, I think that you, you really see the collective leadership of the electric utility industry has said, okay, our, that's been our long-term mission, but we can really do better. And, and we got everybody together, all the senior leaders of the uh, electric business together and said, what is your vision? What's the vision uh, that would really be transformative to this industry? Uh, and they really came out with, with Three things, you know, uh, that are much cleaner, uh, much smarter, and much stronger, uh, and much more customer focused uh, as part of all of those equations. But I think that, you know, the, the idea, um, well, I'll go back to one of my Thomas Edison quotes because I love to quote Thomas Edison. He said, a vision without uh, implementation is a hallucinization. Uh, uh, and you know, we see a lot of people with visions that don't carry through on it. Uh, but I'd like to talk a little bit about the implementation. What has actually happened uh, in the last decade? So let's start out with cleaner. Uh, um, so 10 years ago, if we go back a decade, 10 years ago, our industry was in the crosshairs of 
every major energy and environmental legislation. We had the Waxman-Markey bill, uh, and, uh, and the electric industry was the sole focus in that bill. We had uh, the Merkley rule and EPA, the Clean Power Plan, uh, and as you know, we negotiated on those uh, uh, regulatory situations. And uh, but I'll, I'll, the Waxman Markey was a 17 percent reduction by 2020. The Clean Power Plan was a 30 percent reduction by 2032, kind of even more aggressive than the Paris Agreement. Um, and if you look at what's happened since then, we have reduced carbon emissions in the electric utility sector more than any other place in the world. We've reduced carbon emissions from 2005 levels uh, by 27%. The investor-owned utilities alone have reduced it by 37%. So that's a fairly substantial accomplishment. And how did we do that? Uh, we uh, increased the use of natural gas. Uh, that's been a substantial thing, and I want to give a shout out to natural gas, too. Uh, uh, we did increase renewables a great deal, uh, and that's been aggressive. And we've taken advantage of nuclear plants. And the combination of those things has given us a situation where we have 24-7 reliability and dispatchability, and we have managed to uh, reduce carbon emissions in a major way, and, and as I think Maria pointed out, more than a third of our generation right now is carbon free. So we have to continue to evolve and do those things. But I'll go from where we are and where we have been to the future, uh, and the commitments that have been mentioned here by our CEOs, by our visionaries, has talked about a 50% uh, by 2030 on average, and an 80% by 2050, and maybe we will get carbon free by 2050. That's a long time away. We've got to look at the new technologies that will help us get there, uh, and we are going to be working aggressively on, on new nukes and, and, and storage and all kinds of things that will help uh, change the things there, maybe carbon capture and storage as well, uh, and new technologies, uh, hydrogen technologies and other things of that nature. It's a, it's a very, very exciting future. But the commitment and the vision is there, and we're going to continue to uh, work strongly on that. Smarter. So how are we doing on the smarter side of the equation? On the smarter side of the equation, we have uh, uh, really majorly invested in the grid. And this is, uh, you know, in, in, in over a period of a decade, we have added, we are up to right now, 98 million meters, smart meters. I, had, I was with the mayors last night. We were talking about smart cities and uh, all the changes that are happening and the things that are enabling that. The smart meters are enabling the uh, uh, integration of new technologies on the system and maintaining that reliability. It's enabling us to put storage on there. It's enabling the two-way communication we have with our customers and to uh, allow us to serve customers, whether or not it be the military that wants uh, you know, a high degree of, of uh, resilience uh, and reliability to uh, customers that want clean energy and are demanding clean energy, uh, individual residential customers that want uh, apps to help them manage their system and become more efficient. So uh, a very, very exciting future with all this uh, 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 investment that's being put onto the grid. Finally, stronger. You know, it, it, we used to say reliability is the total priority for the industry. It's the number one priority, and, uh, and, it, and it still is. But reliability, we've found the definition of reliability is how the system works on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, we're very, very proud that we have a 99.99% reliability. Uh, but the uh, resiliency is where we're focused a lot now, which is to say, OK, what happens when you have the extraordinary events? And it's not an ordinary uh, situation where you have the storms like Sandy and Maria and Harvey and Irma and things of that nature, where you have uh, uh, tornadoes, where you have uh, wildfires right now, uh, and uh, or perhaps cyber attacks. Well, our vision, again, during the last decade has been to really uh, 
harden ourselves to the idea that uh, uh, that we have to make this the, the system a lot stronger. And so we formed the partnership. We have a mutual assistance program, which I've been very proud of, but it really was not up to the task of these major events that were happening. So we formed a partnership with the federal government. Uh, we now, uh, you know, work together on storms. We move people. When you think about, you know, moving 67,000 people to, to uh, uh, I mean, that's a major, major operation from Canada and the West Coast and uh, uh, other places uh, all around the country to, to deal with uh, uh, storms. It's a major, major operation. And then we go to a situation where we have the possibility of maybe a cyber attack from Iran uh, that we're looking at right now uh, as a uh, concern, uh, a huge concern. So we, again, we formed the partnership with the federal government uh, with the, under the direction of the president, uh, and we've added new technologies, we've, uh, uh, which we've gotten from the labs. We have uh, major information sharing regimes. We do exercises like we did uh, a couple of months ago that involve thousands of people all around the country. Uh, and we've established a cyber mutual assistance program, which is, uh, means that we're all going to come together in, in, in the case of a cyber attack. And next week, we have our uh, meeting with our federal partners, uh, and we're adding another major segment to it uh, on the wildfire issues because, uh, again, I think it's an industry-wide issue, and uh, we are uh, looking at technologies we can get from the labs of the Department of Energy, uh, things that can help mitigate uh, uh, and detect fires earlier, uh, things that, uh, permits that can help us get in and do the kind of uh, vegetation management or other things, the technologies we can use, the data that you can have uh, in the supercomputers from the federal government that can help us, uh, again, uh, get in front of this situation. We are very, very excited about it, this partnership. Uh, we have all our CEOs that are really leading on this issue coming in for the event. Uh, and again, I think we're going to have a situation where we're going to be moving resources in a major way uh, to deal with wildfires in the future again, to be out in front of it, not that the uh, electricity industry is going to be the solver of all the wildfires uh, out there, but I think we can made, make a uh, major contribution. And I, uh, uh, as my slogan says, I want to change uh, transmission and distribution lines from being called fire hazards into firefighters. So uh, I think it's a, a, you know, a major opportunity for us to do that. So all of this has taken a lot of investment. Uh, we're the most capital intensive industry in the world. Uh, we are now in uh, capital expenditures every year, over $100 billion for the last 10 years. It's close to a trillion dollars. Um, but we've done that at the same time that we've kept rate increases at or below the level of inflation. So, I mean, it's a, it's a remarkable story. Uh, and, uh, and again, uh, uh, a tremendously successful story. So we've got lots of priorities. Let's see if I can do this this time. Um, that uh, I don't know why everybody else can do it. Never. I can't. Oh, I can't uh, anyway, let's see. It, uh, there we go. Uh, it's the same one. That's the same one again. Uh, anyway, we've got lots of priorities uh, uh, that uh, that we face this year. Lots of issues I could go into. Uh, PERPA, ROI decisions, uh, net energy metering, you name it, a lot of things in the states on grid modernization. But I, I just want to really want to continue to just stay focused on the larger picture uh, and the bigger picture and the, and the transformation that's going on in this business. Uh, and, you know, taking a long-term perspective sometimes gives you some valuable lessons. And one lesson that I would take in this election year is that the electric power industry, no matter what happens uh, later on this fall with respect to elections uh, from the president to the senators to the congressmen to the governors to the mayors to the uh, uh, regulators, et cetera, no matter what happens, on November 4th, 2020, the electric power industry uh, will have the same focus and the same vision that we had the day and the night before. Uh, we are committed to driving a smarter, stronger, cleaner energy future for all Americans uh, and to continue to provide the reliable, affordable, 
uh, and increasingly clean energy that they want and need. Thank you very much.